Welcome, today we are looking at the ASUS AX5400 dual band Wi-Fi 6 router RTAX82U. The AX basically means it's a Wi-Fi 6 router. So here in the UK, I'm with Virgin Media. I get one gig download and 52 upload. I have the Hub 4, which is only Wi-Fi 5. We do have Wi-Fi 6 devices in our house, so I thought why not get the full benefit of Wi-Fi 6. Those of you that don't know about Wi-Fi 6, well, they've even got Wi-Fi 6E out now. You get a lot more speeds over Wi-Fi and you get better battery life as well. This also has the WPA3, which is a new security feature. So at the moment, I'm using the Hub 4, as I mentioned before, and I have one pod in the far bedroom. So if you're with Gig 1 with Virgin Media, you get three pods for free. If you're not on the Gig 1, you have to pay for them. I think it's five or six pounds a month, which in my opinion isn't worth it. You'd rather buy your own mesh network. Speaking of mesh network, the reason I went for this router, two main reasons. Well, the first one is lifetime free security and the other one is the AI mesh. So if you have another router that supports AI mesh, it doesn't have to be the new Wi-Fi 6 one, it could be the older one. Say so this is the primary router and you could use that as a mesh node. So you pair them up and then you could put that router where you have poor Wi-Fi. Them are the two things that drew me towards this router rather than getting a different brand. There are two ways of setting this up. First one with the app and the second one is with your computer. I'm going to set it up with the computer. If I do any fine tuning, the computer is more useful. You get a lot more options in the computer than you do with the, the uh, app. It's just some information on the side here and they are the QR codes to download the app. You could pause the video there if you want. And then some more information at the back there. So let us know about the benefits of a Wi-Fi 6 over Wi-Fi 5. So Wi-Fi 5 is AC and Wi-Fi 6 is AX. So this is everything that was included in the box. We get some paperwork. That's to install the app. You have two QR codes there, Google Play and App Store. Wi-Fi helper tip. Get a leaflet there. Some safety information. And then quick start guide in different languages. Power supply. That end would go into the back of the router. Because I'm in the UK, I will have to use this adapter that snaps into place. A two pin adapter there. Cat 6 Ethernet cable. This front part of the router will light up. You are able to control the lights within the app or from the computer. We have status indicators here. It's the internet, then we have 5 gigahertz network, 2.4 gigahertz network, and that's the indicator for the router that it's on. So if you get any problems, like if your internet goes off, that will turn red. And if your router's off, of course, there will be no lights on. And if you have an issue with any of your bands, if you split your bands, so you've got five gigahertz and 2.4 gigahertz separate. If any of the lights go off, say if the 2.4 gigahertz light goes off, that means that band is not working and you could go into the router and investigate what's going on. We have four non-removable antennas. These two do move. At the bottom, we have some information. At the back, that's where the power supply will go. On off button here, a 3.0 USB port there. That's for your printers or your storage devices. Then we have four gigabit LAN ports at the back here. One says gaming port. So if you have four computers hooked up to this, whichever one is hooked up to the one that says gaming port, that will get priority over the other three. Then we have one gigabit LAN port, WPS button here, and then reset there. Okay, so now I'm going to hook this up. Those of you that are with Virgin Media, you need to put your hub into modem mode first. Once it's been put into modem mode, give it about 10 minutes. You definitely need to turn the hub off. If you do not turn it off, it will not connect to the internet because it needs to get a new IP address. So I already have a router.asus.login. 
create a new network special requirement no assign a unique name okay i'll pick a name okay i've done that another quick thing to point out i have selected a different password and ssid from my isp router the reason for that is because last time i had an issue connecting my netgear router when i spoke to the tech team they told me to change the ssid and the password and it started working fine it is a lot easier if you could keep one ssid and one password because that way you don't have to change everything over but sometimes if the router doesn't work you will have to change the ssid and the password it's a pain but it's something that can't be helped apply okay so this is for the router login if you need to access your router you need to pick a name here and a password i'll quickly do that so I'm just going to leave it as admin, as that's the default one. I'll just quickly create a password. Next. So here we have created a network now. So at the top we have logout, reboot, and then it says internet status connected. And what's blurred out, that's my IP address. Then we have security level. This is WPA2, but they have WPA3 out now. This router does support that. At the bottom of your clients, AI mesh nodes. So this is what I was mentioning before. You could link this to any other router that's compat any of the ASUS router that's compatible with the AI mesh. Again, it doesn't have to be a new one. It could be an older one. It doesn't have to be an AX model. It could be an AC model. Uh, so if I just click on that, it's just given as a diagram where you could place the um, routers and then you'll have same ssid and a, the same password you could roam around freely rather than using them extenders because for them you have to pick a different network name uh, with this it's all one so wherever you are going around in your property it will automatically connect you to the best node on the right hand side you could see is letting us know the system status so dual band i've selected that in the name and stuff next one is status it's given us cpu ram and stuff one thing to point out notice the router didn't say it needs a firmware update because i have actually connected this router before that's how i've done my tests and stuff but then i've reset the router just to show you guys how to set it up and i thought we'll have a quick look at the interface as well next to that the rgb lights so this toggle here you have an option to turn the lights off and then you could pick different colors and stuff you could customize the lights guest network you could create that as well if you want ai protection at the moment is off but you can enable that and as i mentioned before this is lifetime of the router free you do not have to pay for anything Netgear, they charge and um, TP-Link, I think they have it for a certain period as well and then you have to pay for that. But Netgear only give you it free for 30 days. Parental control, this is a good one for parents. Quality of service, so here you can decide what you want to give more priority to, whether you want to give it to gamers or streaming. It's off by default and it just explains here it's got adaptive traditional and bandwidth limiter so i've tried this and in all fairness it didn't work for me well actually it did work for my son who's got his ps5 upstairs in his bedroom and he's playing that wireless so he was connected to the wi-fi the 5g he was playing uh, that and um, he was getting good quality and everything but us guys down here on our mobile phones and when we try to go on uh, netflix and stuff we were seriously struggling so i've just left that off a lot of people recommend if you have over 300 download you shouldn't bother with this so let's do a quick speed test so click on this ultra so as you can see my internet speeds are ultra fast and we have traffic analyzer Obviously, I haven't been on it. For, um, I've, I have reset the route. I've just connected up, so there isn't anything here, but it would come up here. It shows you uh, there's a pie chart here. Stuff. Game. 
turn that on mobile open now for port forwarding I don't know anything about that so I'm not going to mess about with stuff I don't know about like open now here USB application I don't have any USB plugged in at the moment but you do have the option for that AI cloud 2.0 To get a lot of options so here I'll show you so wireless so if you are having issues with your devices this is where you could make things run smoother by making changes here so the first thing the uh, Asus recommend because I was having a few issues and they sent me some links uh, so they said turn uh, smart connect off separate 2.4 gigahertz and 5 gigahertz that's the first thing they said so here it says Wi-Fi 6 mode that's enable then we have the channel bandwidth for the 5 gigahertz so by default the 160 megahertz channel is off so if I enable that and then control channel so it's auto at the moment so if I split my bands for the 2.4 gigahertz the best channel is 1 6 and 11 they are less congested and then for this one I'd recommend 48 well that's what Asus recommend for, uh, 48 should be okay or 44 you can download an app which will tell you what channel your neighbors are using I know the app is there for Android I don't know if it's there for Apple but I think it should be according to that you could change your channel so if it says your neighbors running on channel uh, 6 then you could change to 11 the router is compatible with Alexa as well Okay, that was a quick run through. I hope it helped. Let's go do the speed test on the Samsung Galaxy S9 Plus and the S21 Plus. I thought I'd run a speed test on my ISP router first. I'm in my backyard. I have the Samsung Galaxy S9 Plus and the Samsung Galaxy S21 Plus, which is a Wi-Fi 6 phone. some reason the S9 Plus just stopped so I will be rerunning that test again so I'll try this one again so as you can see that isn't bad and do bear in mind that is using a Wi-Fi pod that I have upstairs in one of the bedrooms in USA I think they know that as the plume pod before I connect the Asus router I thought we'll run another quick speed test where I have disconnected the pod so this is just my ISP router now so as you can see the pod does help okay now I'll go and connect the Asus router and then we'll do a speed test on that Okay, let's do another speed test now with the Asus router. So there, as you can see the results, they are better compared to my ISP router. However, I am able to get better. So I'm going to quickly go and split the bands and put both the phones on 5G and then rerun the test. Hopefully I should get better results than when I was using the pod. I've split the bands. I have connected both the phones on 5 GHz. 5 GHz is a faster and stronger connection. However, it doesn't reach very far. That's a big improvement there compared to before. Splitting the bands does make a big difference. There you go friends, that was the Asus RT-AX82U. I hope this video helped someone. If it did, give it a like. If you want to pick this up, I will leave a link in the description box below. And please do subscribe to watch more reviews. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in my next video.